Hello friends and welcome to episode 74 of From the Van. It's a podcast from my van where I have conversations with people who have relationships with residential vehicles. I'm your host Marty Benson and today's episode features Miles from Light Harvest Solar. Light Harvest is a Portland-based solar electric company that at the moment uh, primarily specializes in medium to small uh, solutions for off-grid solar electric systems, uh, mostly van life stuff. They do componentized systems and self-contained systems, and we talked about their products. I've not been and not being compensated in any way, though I'm friends with Miles and a lot of the people that work with him, because um, I worked in the warehouse that they're that they're currently stationed in. Uh, we had a really great conversation about. Um, where his electric company came from and where he's hoping that it'll go eventually. Uh, and we originally sort of bonded over um, a shared love of oversizing a solar array and then also um, the shared ambition of eventually figuring out how to do a living situation that is truly off-grid. It's not even necessarily about uh, modular living or, or vehicular dwelling, uh, but just purely, truly off-grid systems. Um, I hope that you enjoy episode 74 featuring Miles of Light Harvest Solar. Thank you for sitting down with yeah. me uh, to do this. I'm really excited about this. Um, I'm going to try my best not to. Nobody underwrites this podcast. Okay. And so uh, basically what we talk about is whatever I want to talk about, whatever sure. my guest wants to talk about. Sure. I'm going to do my best not to uh, just use this as like an uh, unpaid consulting <laughs> hour. <laughs> okay, whatever, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, Miles, you run Light Harvest Solar. Mm -hmm. How old is the company? Uh, about eight, eight years now, maybe coming up on nine. Okay. Eight and a half, nine years. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, and did you start in Portland? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I started with Green Anchors over there. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, so we're on the, well, depending on how you look at it, the south or east side of the right. St. John's Bridge. That's right. And uh, you were on the, on the north, same side of the river. North, right. But the northwest north west side, side right, before, yeah. like, 300 yards away or yeah, whatever. Super close. Uh -huh. Cool. Um, how did you get into, like, what made you want to start this company? Um, you know, I was in engineering school and I needed money. Okay. And I knew the price where solar was uh, competitive with fossil fuels it had been a known quantity for a long time, right? Uh -huh. And the first time I saw that, I took every cent I had and bought a pallet of solar panels and then um, sold it in like four days and then put all the money back into the, bought more solar panels and put all my money back in and all my money back in and all my money back in and that's the, that's the story. Wow. All the money back in. All so the you money just back basically in. were like flipping solar panels from out of the country? No, the I got, I, I bought I bought them in quantity. Okay. And then sold them in low quantity. You know, yeah. I doled them out. Ones yeah. and twosies kind of thing. Okay. And then, um, yeah, out of my house, basically out of my garage. Wow. And then uh, said, uh, and then rented that, uh, a container, a shipping container. Uh -huh. And uh, at the time there was no electricity there. So I set it all up off grid, um, and uh, you know, grew, got another container, grew, got another container, grew, got another one, grew, got another shop, got employees, did all the stuff you got to do to yeah. get, to get that kind of thing rolling, and um, yeah, things just continued to increase and increase and increase. That's crazy. So you went from being like a basically a sole proprietor. Uh, retail reseller buying it wholesale and selling it re mm -hmm. resale mm -hmm. to what you are now which is basically you're developing now we're developing self-contained yeah, products now, yeah now right. we, now we got our own brand uh-huh okay so yeah. uh what are you excited about right now what are you guys what are you guys doing give us well, an overview uh, of the company you know it's uh so we're we're off grid um we kind of tended to uh you know you kind of go with what what's working with you and so we um, we were totally off grid. Our shop has been off grid over there for years, and so you know that's kind of what we knew, and that's kind of what we did. So um, you know we specialize in off grid. Uh, in through that time, through various you know shows and customers and just momentum in general, we um, kind of got a niche of uh, van life, 
And uh, that's really what's uh, jumped out, and, and that's most of our business. So what it ends up being right now is we do mostly kits. Uh, and solar on, on vans, as you probably know, is fairly technical, and lots of pieces and tiny pieces that have to fit the medium pieces that have to fit the big pieces that have to fit everything. And, um, and that's what we do, is we just figure out all the pieces down to the details, uh, make sure they're high quality and a fair price, um, give people drawings and support, and we kind of serve the DIY uh, off-grid solar community. And, um, and then, you know, we're moving now into uh, having all-in-one products that are a lot more plug-and-play, and, and they're just, the good ones are just starting to come out that are powerful enough for us to be able to power more than just like your phones or like a little, you know, thing at your campsite or lights or something like that. We're getting into now fridges and air conditioning right. or cooking, particularly the, the stuff that was made me start to transition into this is being able to cook, and do hot water and do the big stuff that you have to do effectively. And, um, and also, of course, I'm a solar company, so I recognize how important the generation is. And you and I have had, had um, lots of conversations about how generation is really more important than storage sure right and if you're not generating the power it's like you have a gas the battery's the gas tank the solar is the gas pump you know you can have a, a hundred thousand gallon gas tank but it doesn't do you good any good if you're just getting a trickle out of the gas pump right so um so these are starting to get to this has 700 watts input uh, which is really um, enough to have a solid system for a van and mm -hmm. things like that uh, so so we're doing Componentized systems for the bigger stuff. We're doing these for the small, for the medium to small stuff, and um, and yeah, solar is constantly moving at a million miles an hour. Yeah, it's crazy how fast that. I want to talk about these self-contained units in a minute, but I feel like uh, just for the benefit of anybody who might be listening, that's that's not tracking completely what what you're saying. Uh -huh. We're blasting past some things pretty fast. Let's talk okay. about uh, if I order a kit from you. Um, what components are you sending to me and to what degree are, is it already assembled, right? right? We're talking we're talking batteries, we're talking inverters, mm -hmm. uh, fuse banks, breakers, maybe a bus bar if you use those. So use, yeah. um, uh, these are all things you really have to have a decent amount of know-how yeah. to put together, mm -hmm. um, but to what degree is it assembled if I order it from you? Are you sending me the yeah. things and, and the instructions on how to yeah. Put all the fittings together and stuff? Yeah, so uh, the way we do it is um, we'll send you all the components. Well, let's start from the beginning. Basically, we've got a questionnaire that will give us a pretty good idea of your needs. What size you need. What size and everything like that. And, and the things that, there's a few major components that you have to decide what you want. Your solar, your how many batteries you want, how big of an inverter you want. If you want an inverter charger, so you want to be able to charge from the outside world, um, alternator charging, and then um, and then a bunch of details like DC distribute AC DC distribution and things like that. So with those, once we figure out that, those parameters, we have templates that have all these different combinations of number of batteries with number of inverters with or with inverter with solar panels and things like that, and um, they've all got schematics and things like that. So we. Uh, you know, say this is what we think you'll want, send you a, um, uh, an estimate based on that, and uh, then, you know, there's a back and forth, any kind of questions that people have, um, and then we figure out the hard stuff, because what the customers I've found over time, the, the, there's a skill set involved with figuring out wire size. Um, you know, you've got to know how big all the holes are to fit the lugs for every component, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got to have high quality stuff. Um, and it, there's a lot of trial and error in trying to figure it out because you get on Amazon and you, or you get on the internet and there's a thousand people saying a thousand things and they contradict each other a lot. Lots of times people did it once so they really think they know. Um, you know, we've had lots of issues with things like low quality breakers. Your system doesn't work. You don't know why. You're a newbie. You know, you're doing your thing. And, and so we just stick with the stuff we know that works and the way we know it works. We put a lot of effort into making it simple 
and intuitive and um, and then we give you a drawing that matches all the stuff that you have which met you know component a matches component b matches component c matches component d um, so we don't have instructions per se because everything's so custom sure right? but what we do is we send you a schematic drawing that's going to match it right. um, you know the customer has to learn things like how to crimp a wire is real important sure. stuff like just best practice of routing the wires and securing them okay. and um, that kind of thing and then we just we we create it up in a big wooden crate send it on a semi truck you get it open it up everything's there and um, you know we've had great luck with it yeah yeah people have been able to um, step up to the plate and, and make their systems and you know uh, it just keeps getting better and better so I'm assuming that people are happy they seem to be and reviews are really really good and super cool yeah yeah so that's that's what we do we just kind of we do we do we do all the work that, that people would have a really hard time figuring out right and then give it to them and it works good and sure. that's it's our, super that's time consuming um, and then to figure all of this stuff super out time consuming. and then you've got people on YouTube with conflicting stories about right. what they've done right. and no really not really any quality control right. and uh, and the, the thing that I tell people is that I spent the majority in my build, the majority of my time and money on my electrical system yeah. because a poorly built cabinet can't kill me, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that's that's super cool. You send everything down to down plugs to and lug. washers and everything. Lugs, wires, breakers, fuses, yeah, um, all the major components. Like I said, the panels are going to match your charge controller. We got the we've got big powerful distribution and. And a lot of the details, like I said, have just been this trial and error over time. Finding what works, finding what's easiest, finding what's the highest performing, making sure all of the specifications for the power that's being transmitted around is within the parameters. And, and that's where people make the mistakes is, you know, you got to move around, you got a 3000 watt inverter, so you basically got to move 280 amps around. But you've got a bus bar that will only handle 100 amps, mm -hmm. so you've got all these, you know, things that are out of spec, and everything has to, that everything has to be in spec based on how much power is being transmitted around at that particular junction. Yeah. And so, you know, that's what we figure out, and then send it to people, and we found over time that uh, yeah, that's what so that's what people want. Epic. Yeah. Um, I love that. I love that service, and you're probably. You're probably, I'm just speculating here because I haven't priced out any of your systems, oh, yeah. but um, because you buy everything at wholesale and then sell it to people and you've got this sort of streamlined workflow, you can probably provide people with a great deal of confidence, good products, mm -hmm. um, and more or less instructions on how to build their system yeah. uh, at a price that's not a whole lot higher than they would pay if they parted out everything by themselves. Yeah, I mean we have to yeah. be competitive, right? Right. We have to sell at a, at a competitive price, right. and so that's what we do. Right? Awesome. Uh -huh. um, so let's talk about. Uh, I want to start to get into um, the idea of this whole solar electrical off-grid uh, system world. Mm -hmm. Uh, accelerating and progressing super fast. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, three years ago when I built my started building my first van. I had an AGM battery uh, because it was cheap, and I didn't uh, want to spend the money on lithium. I didn't understand at the time the, the benefits of lithium. And then on the market at the time, all of the self-contained units that you could buy were way below the specs that I wanted because yeah. I wanted to be able to run an instant pot right. and. Um, some AC appliances and stuff off of 120 volt, um, and now everything's starting to get a lot bigger. Like, uh, what again? Yeah. Tell us about these units. Yeah. So um, this is our main one. Uh, the the biggest reason why this is such a, a move forward is uh, because it does 2,000 watts okay. inverter. So the, all of the really important stuff when you're off grid is um, f about 1,500 up to 1800 watts so you got to have at least that if you really want to be able to do the important stuff like cooking and hot water right total necessity mm -hmm. cooking and hot water you have to do it one way or another and you can do it with propane but i don't like propane and i don't want you know for a bunch of reasons the biggest ones are it's have, I, I, I 
refuse to have an open flame in my van. Like, sure. I just won't do it. Yeah. And I also won't deal with the poison gases. Right. I just won't do it. Right. And I don't need to anymore. Um, and then beyond that, you got to buy the propane, you got to plumb the propane, you can reallocate whatever budget that is into solar and be a f lot really far ahead. Um, you know, you have to, some people are just using the little Coleman things with the canisters, mm -hmm. you know, it's just not convenient. Yeah. Uh, now you just press a button, turn a knob, your water's boiled, your food is cooked. You know, we can do uh, induction cook stoves, we can do toaster ovens, we can do microwaves, we can do, you know, all kinds of stuff. You really can't even do propane. Uh, Jared Tachi did a Grava oven, mm -hmm. which is a super fancy convection thing. Right, you know, it's, right, right. And it, it had no problem. So um, there's just so, along with that, you know, my heated blankets I have to use. I'm mm -hmm. constantly trying to talk people into that. Mm -hmm. um, and do you, you get AC one, or DC heated blankets? AC. Okay. Mm -hmm. I run an AC fridge too. Oh really? Mm -hmm. okay. Because I don't, you know, they're so, the DC fridges are 800 bucks. Right. And they're more efficient, but if you've got a good solar input, then this, I never have problems with my fridge on mm -hmm. this. It takes a little bit more, but it has no problem keeping up with the solar panels that I have. Sure. And, and of course, that gets into the solar thing where I'm a huge advocate for as much solar as possible. Right, right. and that's where you were talking about generation earlier. Yeah, so I, I run a 345 watt panel. Um, our most popular panel that we sell is a 400 watt single panel. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that goes on top of ProMasters and Sprinters and vans of all sorts to fit anything with two fans, one of those. And uh, yeah, our typical, um, our typical kit is, you know, a 400 watt panel, Usually a 3,000 watt inverter charger, um, alternator charging at 30 amps, and three batteries, sometimes four, sometimes two, sometimes five, sometimes six. Mm -hmm. And um, you put all that stuff together, and uh, yeah, you've got a really functional system that's sure. all electric. And um, in general, I try to advocate for people not even, you know, like I said, reallocating any kind of propane budget, just get solar, make it happen, mm -hmm. and, um, and stay away from all of that. And, and we do really well. And, and Back to the fridges, I just use an AC fridge. Yeah. You just easy. have like the, the college dorm fridge? I buy this bought one the other day, yeah. $129. Yeah. AC dorm fridge and call it good. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, so let, let's get the specs on the, on the Aspen here. You, sure. you said it's got a 2000 watt inverter. Um, and what else is in there? Yeah, okay, so uh, the, biggest, the, the biggest specs that this has is it's a 2000 watt inverter. 2 kilowatt hour lithium battery mm -hmm. and a 700 watt max solar charge controller and it'll even go a little bit above that. Okay. So, um, what? and then there's a lot of other small things like it's got a 25 amp DC output. Okay. So if you want to run DC lights or even a DC fridge, mm -hmm. I've run a, I've run, um, here's a cigarette lighter port. This is 10 amps, this one's 25. Um, I've run Dometics uh, off of the cigarette off lighters. Of the old yeah. cigarette lighter, yeah. And then just a couple three amp ones for light. So this okay. is all your DC. Uh, you have a grand total of uh, 25 here, 10 here, and six here. So uh, and, uh, just to interrupt you real quick, I think I was talking to uh, I can't remember if it was you or Mark about the the port on the far left, the uh, 25 amp guy. Um, do you have fittings that just click in there? Yeah. That you don't have to wire in. I think that's no, super no, no. Cool yeah, too. it's a nice, um, it's a nice metal, high quality uh, fitting. You pull a collar back and stick right. it in, and then you have wires out, so you can run it. Typically, what we do is if it's a full van build, we'll run it to um, an AC DC box or right. just a DC fuse panel. Fuse bank. Okay. Yeah, and then that will distribute it out to like twelve circuits or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Right? right. Very and cool. Then you I can, love that. Yeah, you can run that. And we were running our lights in our shop over there off it, you know, we just plug it in and it's a touch screen, you just turn it on, right? And uh, then the lights come on. Very cool. And, and then you have like a shit ton of AC yeah, outlets. Yeah, six, six AC there. outlets right there, uh -huh. um, which comes in super handy. Uh, you've got a USB a C, a couple of USB A's right here. And then one of the things that um, is uh, ended up saving me a whole bunch of times is that it's got a wireless charging. Okay. Uh, for your phone. Oh phone wow! Time, right. That's crazy. Yeah, it's uh, you don't always have a cord with you. Yeah. You know, and I've been in times, multiple times when I didn't have a cord or other people didn't have a cord, and then I was reliant on my phone, like we all are. Right. We have to have it. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course. Um, so that that's uh, that's pretty nice, and um, yeah. So 
Oh, and then something that. else just occurred to me about this because I've never considered putting an inverter charger in one of my vans. It may have been a mistake in retrospect, uh, but I've never I've never wanted to plug in. I'm usually not in a place where I have access to it anyway. Sure. But it just occurred to me that this definitely is that too, right? You can charge yeah, oh, this absolutely. off of the grid in somebody's house. Absolutely, like 500 watts, so it'll charge pretty quick. It's got right. total. If you have your solar maxed out and uh, your uh, grid power in, you can get you know up to 1,200 watts, right? Give or take, you know, yeah. 11, 1,200 watts. So it'll charge real quick, you know, super fast. Super fast if you want it, and then and also, unlike your Unlike your kids, you can carry this into the coffee shop. I mean, and, it's kind of heavy. It's kind of heavy, but it's it's uh, portable enough. This one, one of the nice things about this is, the more the more uh, performance you get, the heavier it gets. You know, bigger battery, sure. bigger inverter, bigger charge control. Mm -hmm. So it's about as big as you can get and still stay portable. Right. And I use it all the time portably. I'll pull it out, set up a table when I do my cooking when I'm camping. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just leave it on the table and I do my hot water with a little a kettle. Mm -hmm. And I do, I use skillets and things like that to cook yeah. with. So uh, the portability of it has ended up being really clutch, especially in something like a power outage in your house. Uh, you can just take it in. If you want to build something somewhere where there's no power, uh, I do that all the time. It'll run any, any kind of saw, any kind of drill, sure. any kind of you know big um, chop saws, whatever right. you got. Just about any, and even although I haven't tried it, I imagine it would run a small welder fine. Wow. Right. Um, okay. Well, how about this then? Suppose is is there a way? Uh, obviously, the um, the charge controller that's in there is in there, mm -hmm. and the inverter that's in there is in there. Is there a way that if you bought one of these and you wanted to expand your storage capacity, right. can you hook it up to something else? Um, at the moment, no, but you can't. Uh, but what we end up doing is the okay. So these are so much less expensive compared to what you get with the components mm -hmm. that if you you can actually get like one of these or one of these or we've got a smaller one of these two or two of these and 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 have much more capability than you would with buying the components right and at yeah. that point you've got you know you, let's say you have two of these you have um four kilowatt hours of battery you have 1400 watts of solar input you've got 4000 watts of inverter and you can charge one from the other with the ac port right right so so let's just say this one's full and my solar panel is generating power still, right? Mm -hmm. Normally, it just turns the solar power off. Sure. You don't have the ability to, um, you're not taking advantage of the power that you're generating. So you just plug the other one in, fill that one, and then take advantage of the solar, right? So that's how I, uh, that's how I do that, and it works great. Right. Yeah. Wow. So I didn't even think of that. That, that just made me think of the fact that uh, even if you do have an already uh, built-in uh, standard, and I know people do this with the, with the super small uh, Jackery. jackeries and stuff, um, but you could totally, I could buy one of those, You could put it in my van, right. plug it into my AC, and just charge it charge constantly, it all the time. right? Because you're in a situation a lot where you're generating a lot more, you fill your batteries, you super got a fast. super big solar yeah. and two batteries, so they're full all the time. Right. So you could literally take this into your van, plug it in, it would take you 30 seconds, and um, you'd have two more kilowatt hours, you'd have 2,000 watts more inverter. Um, you could potentially, if you wanted to, put a portable solar panel into it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you'd have all kinds of DC, you'd have, and you'd be portable, so you could take it out and sure. you know, potentially build a van out of it. Right. Easy, right? Yeah, yeah. Or do any kind of tools or whatever. <laughs> right? So you could immediately, like, you could. You'd have to cough up the cash, right. but you could immediately be up and double your, double your capacity. Almost double. Everything is almost Because we were talking about this, is uh, for people who are used to thinking in terms of uh, DC uh, power and sizing batteries and amp hours, mm -hmm. this would be roughly equivalent One to point, uh, yeah, uh, 170? 170 amp hours. 170 amp hours. Uh -huh. Um, and we were talking the other day. You're coming out with a bigger one of these still. Uh, not, not yet. No, not yet. We're, not yet. We're gonna, you're thinking you know, about. When I can, yeah, when, when we can do it, we will. But they're yeah. not, they're not, they're not quite out yet. Okay. But, yeah. Um, and then <laughs> the other thing that occurred to me a minute ago, when we were talking about this, you're saying that you know these are so much less expensive than your larger kits and stuff. But obviously, the benefit of those is that they're totally modular, meaning right. I can 
customize them to whatever I want, right? If I want a, a way oversized battery bank, for right. example, I can order several batteries and, right. and still and have a huge, uh, like an upgraded alternator and very little solar right. or no solar if I want it or whatever. Um, but it sounds to me like you're sort of competing with yourself here. When is the self-contained unit going to overtake that other part of the business? Um, you know, our, we're still seeing really strong demand for the module, mm -hmm. uh, for the for the componentized systems, mm -hmm. um, and that's still the majority of it. And I think when it's going to overtake it is pretty soon when the capabilities are are totally um, uh, are are on par with each other. In mm -hmm. uh, in general, right now, uh, for what we do, this is sort of the the smaller end of of what is practical for living. Right. Right. Yeah. And then, as soon as the products start to come out, which which when they do, we'll have them. Um, it'll it'll slowly take over, and, mm -hmm. and really the market's going to dictate that. Sure, you know we're going to give people what they want. Um, right now, they uh, yeah they, they're still wanting the componentized systems a lot that are right. built hard, built in like hardwired into the system and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So um, this is going to be a minute, but it's coming soon. It's coming fast. I, yeah. I think it's going to overtake it. And, our job, of course, is to stay on the forefront of whatever technology there is, and then offer whatever the best stuff is to the customer and yeah. stuff like that. But it's definitely getting uh, it's definitely getting to the point where the all-in-ones are going to um, have the capabilities to, to and probably a better price too. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything's getting cheaper as as more and more people sort of jump onto this. I want to talk in a little bit about you know non-fan applications, but first I want to talk about just back to sort of the benefits of the system, another one that didn't occur to me the other day, because my question, my critical question of this system was, I do have a 3000 watt inverter, sure. and at, at that's sort of on the low end of what I would want, mm -hmm. right, in my van, because I use it, I regularly make a breakfast burrito that has air fried uh, hash browns in it, and bacon and eggs, which are on my cooktop, right, and I can't really run both of those at the same time, yeah. Um, but I do want to be able to run at 1800 watts and still have my computer plugged in sure, and know that I'm not going to trip a breaker or whatever. Right. But what occurred to me is that if you did have two of these mm -hmm. and you have those plugged into uh, opposite ones, you'd actually be able to run both of those. I'd be able to run both of those things at the yeah, same time. So, exactly. Yeah, as long as you know where to plug something in, it's really sort of infinitely expandable. And I suppose yeah. you could, um, if if I wanted, what do you do with one of these systems when uh, somebody wants like your traditional like AC outlet plate on the wall? Just run a put run a cord to a distribution, yeah, to a to an electrical box, and yeah. then it'll go everywhere. Cool. And do you provide support for like? Uh, like sort of ancillary kits mm -hmm. to these. Oh, yeah. So like if I wanted to order one of these, but also the cables and the fuse bank and uh, all of that. distribution, we even have it yeah. set up for alternator charging and stuff. Very so cool. one of the nice things about this is you can you can have two. So this is going to be your solar and this is your um, either alternator charging or short power. Okay. And so you can do them at the same time, which is a big feature that we want, that we, you know, that was really important to us. Yeah. Uh, because you, a lot of them are set up, you can either do one or the other, but you can't do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we can set this up for alternator charging, and then we'll sell you all the stuff for that, all the wiring, all the fusing, breakers, and um, schematics, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so there's a lot of um, extra stuff, of course, the wire that comes down off the roof, the pass-through that goes through the roof, um, the right connections. Uh, you know, it's a lot, lot, lot easier with these. Sure. Uh, in terms of the sort of hardware that goes with it, yeah. but nonetheless, there is hardware that there's you still need. work to do. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. still hardware, and a lot of people want to set these up uh, like a traditional van, where you do have your fuse block that you pull out and you look at it. You hide this somewhere, right? And um, yeah, so you can really you can really set it up either way. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as far as like what you were saying with your, um, you know, having an inverter that is three thousand, the, the thing that um, is important to realize is you really don't want, let's say if, 
most inverters, they really, there's ones that go up to like 5,000, but when you turn those on, man, they suck a ton of power. Yeah, the, just the, the ambient. Just, yeah, yeah the, the self-consumption is yeah. very high, right? Uh -huh. And so there's an advantage to having, say, like two 2,000s two right. compared to one 4,000. And there's not that many 4,000s on the market anyway. But mm -hmm. if you're, you know, if you say are running a USB, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to kick on a 4,000, it's going to suck your power down, lickety split. Right. My last one, uh, my last Xantrix 3000, it sucked down five, uh, five amps. Wow, just, just to on. turn it on. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, you know, a lot of people don't take that into account. So we kind of tend to want to stay as small as we can to mm -hmm. give people the performance they need. So is there a way to turn the inverter off in these yeah. guys? That's it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. There you go. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, that's all really exciting mm -hmm. uh, that they're getting. Well, I guess in, uh, there's that, and then also it's it's. Wait, would the DC power still work when you hit that button? No. Oh. Okay. Uh, but it will here. That's AC on. Okay. Oh, okay. I that's see. That's DC on. So you can turn on either one, either or both, right? Nice. And keep them on or off, which you should. You should keep it off if you don't. If you're not using it, you should keep them. You know, you should keep them off. Yeah. Because it will suck down power and drain your battery mm -hmm. fairly rapidly. I mean, you know. Depending, and that's why the generation is important because you, you, you know, you really want to have power in all the time if you can. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's, yeah, let's talk about generation, and, and this is, this is where I get uh, selfish in some questions. Is that I, I have never spent a winter at a high latitude before, uh -huh. um, and at one point earlier today, even with 800 watts on top of my van, I looked at it, and you know, it's. Uh, early August, we're not that far from the summer solstice, right. and it was overcast and I was only getting 15 amps. And at that time of the day right now, I'm accustomed to getting, you know, 35 or 40 mm -hmm. and uh, into my system. Um, what's it going to be like in the winter? I'm, I'm kind of feeling like I'm not going to be able to cook three meals a day all electric in the winter. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a huge variation. Yeah. Between um, so winter solstice and summer solstice, especially in Oregon, yeah. because it gets dark, right? Right. Not so, only is it dark more, but the sunlight is a lot less direct. Too. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The angle it hits you in three ways. The days are shorter, so there's a lot less sun. Mm -hmm. The weather's always way worse, mm -hmm. and um, the angle of the sun is also way down compared. So, so you get hit really hard with solar. Uh, and it can, you know, normally I'll see zero generation once or twice a year. Oh, wow. Right around solar time, uh, around um, winter solstice here when it's dark. Mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, it's a big, it's a huge difference. It can go from zero percent to a hundred percent. Right. And expect the whole range. Um, typically in the winter in Oregon, yeah, it's easy to get down to 10 percent of your rating. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's where. Um, uh, a lot of things come into play like you want as much solar as you can get because when you're in your hard time you know you if you size it for best case scenario you're not going to have anywhere near enough sure. and if you size it for worst case scenario you're going to have more than enough in best case scenario but a lot of our situation is you do what you can fit on the roof and yeah. you max it out right sure. and then you lie where you lie um, if you're going to be uh, in Alaska in the middle of winter you very well may need a small generator, right? Um, and if you're going to be in, you know, someplace sunny and cool in the summer, you're probably not going to need anything, right? Right. And uh, but one of the advantages of having a lot of solar, which again, like, is so important to me, is that when you get into the short periods of time when the sun comes out, right? It break, the clouds break. You get two hours of sun. You have so, a, a lot more ability to, to fill up your battery and then, um, you know, do what you need to do. But yeah, so that's absolutely the weakest point of solar is that it's totally dependent on the sun sure. and it's highly variable. Did you run into trouble with that when you were running your shop off grid yeah, up here? Sure. Yeah. Were you down for days or? No, no, we were never down. We yeah. did, we got, we did have a, a grid connection when we needed it. Okay. And that was mostly for heat in the, heat in the winter. Right. Is all we ever needed it for. Yeah. But again, we also had a, a lot of solar, you know, solar generation, which, um, incidentally enough, it was almost all broken panels and uh, just, you know, junk, right? Mm -hmm. But it all worked. So everything that we had, that you know, we had a ton of panels up there that were 
returns and broken mm -hmm. and thrashed and we got us through for years. Still kept working. That's cool. Yeah, it didn't work as much as well. Right. And it varied a lot even then, but yeah, it worked. And but we had enough solar to keep us going with the minimums: lights, computers, phones, and, for, and uh, computer. Yeah, lights, computers, phone all the time for right. our office. Right? Cool. Uh huh. Uh, oh, this occurred to me while we we're talking about something else. What um, what are you using? In your systems for uh, for alternator charging, it's like a DC to DC charger. No, this is different than a DC to DC charger. Okay. We have a small inverter in there because it's an AC plug. It's an alternating current plug, right? Oh no no no! Not I'm oh, talking wait, about alternator from the from the van. Uh, for, for these from the van. Yeah, what, what sort of device? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Here. So it's an inverter, just oh. a standard inverter. So so the 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 way to charge it is a plug wall, wall charger, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of using a DC to DC, which is essentially the same thing, we use a 120 volt AC inverter. So it's 12 volt to DC to 120 AC, and then you just plug in the wall charger. Wait, I think we're missing each other. How do you charge this off of the van? Yeah, that's While the right. van is running. Oh, God, yeah, I'm that, confused. Yeah. So I it's, it's, this, it's I, different. I've never seen this it's, device. It's, no, it's, it's different than, than the way people are used to. Yeah. Um, so you know you know how you can run an inverter off of twelve volts, right? Yes. So I you take the I take an, I take an inverter. Yeah. Uh, I take an inverter and hook it up to the uh, to your alternator, right? Okay. A small inverter. Uh huh. In, instead of a DC to DC. Yeah. Right. And then you just plug in the included wall charger. Yes. Yes. Right. I see. And then it charges. So it's okay. got solar in, and then the wall charger. And if you want to plug short power, you just unplug that and plug it into yeah. an extension cord or whatever you got. Nice. Right. I so that that's how we do it. I wasn't even prepared for the answer to that question. <laughs> it's different than other people do it. But that's yeah. how that's how we do it. Yeah, that's right? cool. And then you only need one type of input here. Uh huh. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then you can then you have your solar and your thing. So it's. It's um, it's a little bit different what people are used to, but it works good, and, mm -hmm. it, and it also has a couple advantages in that a DC to DC charger always prioritizes the DC to DC charger if you're driving. Okay. Oh. So if you're if you're um, in a situation where you run your battery down through the night, okay, you've got all day for a nice sunny day, right? But you're also driving. You're gonna. Um, you're gonna start driving and your DC to DC is gonna charge your battery. Maybe it takes three or four hours or whatever it takes and it's full, but your solar's still generating and it turns off. So you've essentially wasted the gas mm -hmm. to fill those batteries because it's always on. Yeah. The way we do this is we just keep it totally turned off until we need it, right? Mm -hmm. And if we need it, then we can turn it on. Mm -hmm. um, that way it prioritizes the solar. Over the um, over the you know wasting the gas to generate the power to charge the thing right sure so we just don't even we just don't even use alternator charging unless we need it that's which cool. isn't all that often right but sometimes yeah. yeah so that that's the way we've set it up it's a different way of setting it up but it works good awesome yeah yeah I didn't even heard of that before uh -huh. it took me a minute to process it yeah. um, tell me about your vans um, you know I got. Uh, I um, I have Astro, I yeah. a Safari and an Astro, and um, yeah, I've got a lifted uh, a five a five inch lift and thirties and some shocks on the, on a um, a nice Safari van. And it's, it's the green one, right? Uh, it's my daily driver too, so yeah. um, I don't um, you know quite have. Well, there's a couple things. I live in the deep in the mountains, like mm -hmm. high mountains. Up your Telluride, right? Mm -hmm, your yeah. Telluride, and so I need four wheel drive. Yeah, or all wheel. This one's all wheel drive, but um, I do a lot of a lot of uh, you know pretty burly trails, mm -hmm. and and, I, and and it's totally capable up to anything you need a low gear for, mm -hmm. right? It'll do. It'll get way up in the mountains and stuff that even a even a fully lifted all wheel full wheel drive sprinter like totally decked out wouldn't wouldn't do. Right. And so um, and that's what I do. I've got a fridge in there. I've got my solar panel. I use these systems and. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I, I, I use a blow-up mattress, which is another thing with a uh, power system in there. You just yep. blow it up, takes you 30 seconds, and then I and you can decon it and be up and back, up and down real quick and easy. Yeah. So now we've got it set up where we can um, we can we've got one big huge tote with everything in it. We just throw it in the van. We can do our Saturday chores at home, mm -hmm. um, be out and be to a site. Multiple places we can get out. To, we can we can get out to Moab, mm -hmm. and um, you know we can do our our Saturday chores and be out to Moab in the same day. Yeah, and then and then back 
by yeah. by the weekend, you know. So so we that's how we tend to do it a lot. Cool. And then the extended trips, um, yeah, we just take a lot of we just take a lot of power. We can get we've got a huge radius around us that is like A plus stuff that it, that it's real easy to get to. Yeah, yeah. We awesome. have a great great time with that. So I don't need to ask why you live there, um, but why is your biz because it's rad? Why is your business in Portland? Because that's where it started. Yeah, that's where my crew is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's much more um, where I live so far out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, so far out in the middle of nowhere that there's no, it's just not possible. Yeah, I could do it in a town that is like an hour away. Yeah, but that's the only option. Right, right, right. Yeah, shipping and receiving is easier here. There's, you don't have to relocate anybody. Uh, and all my like, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, Lot, lots of things like that. And we've got a great crew, and they do a great job. And has the whole time and uh, yeah yeah um as you know i'm friends with the folks at over nomadic customs and i'm uh i'm really i'm really excited to see what comes out of you guys being in such, such yeah. cl close proximity you yeah. just moved into the third bay in the same building with them uh -huh. and it's uh i know that you guys have a pretty close working relationship you helping them out with their yeah, electrical we build, systems we have build all the power systems. or we don't build them we there are the power systems. Yeah, 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 they use your power systems. And um, especially because your, I think they already benefit a great deal uh, from that relationship as a van building company. Um, but especially since you're, so far, your primary um, motivator and your, most of your business comes for, you know, uh, van applications, it's probably awesome to be, for you guys to be yeah. in such close proximity yeah. to them. Because they're constantly well, hearing. Well, that's how I met you. Here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we probably wouldn't have met, right? Right. Oh, so Otherwise, of course not. if I was out in some airport yeah. some warehouse, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's cool that, that communities happen. Yeah, lots of synergy and lots of lots of meeting people, and yeah, it worked out really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um. All right. Now here, finally, we get to talk about what I really want to talk about. Okay. Which is um, this? You and I have sort of been. Uh, uh, shooting the shit about like a totally I'm really I'm really sort of starting to become more and more interested in non-van off-grid sort of s completely self-contained um, living situations and uh, you were talking about not only you know electrical obviously we can we can go off grid pretty easily these days, and you know, panels are getting more efficient, batteries are getting bigger and cheaper, and all of that. Um, but you mentioned an incinerating toilet to me the other day, and I, I never thought I'd spend so much time talking about right. a toilet. Right. Uh, and the other thing that's really sexy to me about about uh, a structure, a a static structure somewhere is that usually they're more than 60 square feet mm -hmm. and so you can get a whole lot more than 900 watts of solar mm -hmm. on right. top of it yeah. right um so what do you what what's the future of a completely self-contained dwelling yeah i mean it, it's uh, incredibly bright um it's you know revolutionary if you want to go down that road um because the 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 uh Capabilities are basically endless, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know what you were talking about is the toilets, and that's kind of like the bane of humanity's existence for all of time. It's Tons, how we get each other sick. Tons of places. Yeah, it's how we pollute the ocean. That our mortality rates. Yeah. It affects them really bad. It had all kinds of major problems. Lots of the world is still trying to deal with their waste, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and. Uh, you know, so I just kind of went on the tangent of, um, well, I've been on it for a long time, but the, 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 as stuff emerges, the capabilities become better. And at this point, um, you know, incinerating toilets take a lot of power, but you can generate a lot of power. You can store a lot of power. You can do a lot of things. So, um, you know, that kind of, the, it, it's an unlimited, it's an unlimited thing. Like you could potentially have let's say there's a national park somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Everybody knows how gross those toilets are, mm -hmm. right? They could build a small building that would have, um, uh, you know, an incinerating toilet, 
um, a water water generator. I don't I, I don't remember exactly what they call them, but they they pull water out of the air with a condenser, mm -hmm. right? You could heat what have hot water. You could have um, lights, everything, you know, all in one unit. And, and you could place it anywhere in the world. Sure. And for that matter, you could take one of these with two solar panels and you could build a house anywhere in the world. Right. You know, this would maybe not, this might do one um, one incinerating toilet, if, although I haven't tried it, so I don't really know the reality of it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, if you had, if you have enough solar, yeah, there, it's, you could, you could get all of that done. Yeah. And, and so we're kind of in this phase right now where we're, um, you know, if we don't do it, someone will. Yeah. And, they're get, they're, uh, and the capabilities are, are totally unheard of. You could go to Peru or something like that and put, uh, make a system that would bring somebody from, the, from literally the dark with, with no way to deal with their waste and really no way to get water either right. into a situation where they could do all three of those things, mm -hmm. ha have li lights and deal with their waste and get some water and all this kind of stuff, and just with pointing these big panels at the sun and plugging it into a box. Right. right, and you don't need a grid, you don't need any municipal plumbing. Which is the biggest problem for, for these uh, really poor folks. Right. Because in order to get a grid, you have to have, you know, just everybody knows how big of a project Massive that is tons of investment money. Yeah. tons of money and especially for the people who are way out there you know there's like say there's 50 people living 50 miles away from anything how mm -hmm. are they going to do it mm -hmm. you know there's no way and right. so so what they've done is lived the old way for a very long time and they're still doing it and um you know i was down by monument valley talking to some natives down there and i asked them how are, how are they dealing with it you know and, and um, they happen to have some solar the ones I was talking to, but they said the old timers are still out there with no lights, no gen no electricity, no nothing. Right. Living, living, you know, how that would be. And, and I think we all kind of um, understand how hard it would be to do that, given how we live right now. Yeah, given the amenities that we've grown we, accustomed to. Yeah, we could. I mean, imagine living without lights. Yeah. Imagine living without a phone. Yeah. You know, I mean, no, no one is, no one is ready to go back. Right. That far, and um, and so uh, so it opens up a huge amount of um, possibilities for the poorer folks in the world, the more remote people, folks in the world, and um, and it's gonna uh, it's gonna it's gonna bring the second half of the world into the light. Yeah, absolutely, it is. Yeah, that's super exciting yeah. for a million reasons. Um, okay. So I'm still hung up on this uh, because I haven't experienced it yet. Yeah. I'm still hung up on this uh, limited availability of light. What is the most elegant solution for not starting up a generator if you're at a high latitude? You know, obviously, if you have an acre yeah. and a three thousand square foot structure, right? You can put solar on the ground, right? And even if you are producing yeah. at ten percent of rating or whatever, you can still get enough power yeah. to run your toilet sure. or whatever. Right. But like yeah. Um, yeah, okay, so that's just a cold hard reality. Yeah. Is that the best thing you do it, it depends um, because of course we design these things, right? Mm -hmm. Constantly designing them. So we're constantly trying to find the middle ground. In other words, it if you it, it takes a lot it, if you're in a situation where light is limited you can get like 90% of the way there, but the last 10 off of solar, but the last 10% gets really expensive mm -hmm. because you got to buy tons of solar panels. 15 kilowatts. Yeah, yeah tons. Yeah. If you want to size it for worst case scenario, right? right? So, um, where uh, and then the sun comes out and you've got way more than you, you sure. way more than you need and you spend a lot. So for people who are absolutely dependent on it all the time and are in low light situations and things like that, we basically say we can get you ninety percent of the way there. You're going to have to probably have a small generator that you don't use that much, mm -hmm. and that's just the reality of the situation. Yeah. But what it will do is it'll make it so you don't need to use a generator that much. Right. Because if you're dealing with a generator a hundred percent of the time, it's a nightmare for tons of reasons. You're probably remote, you probably have a long ways to go to get gas, you gotta go get it and have it sloshing around your car and sneaking up your car and spilling all over the place. You gotta bring it back, 
haul it in, spill it all over trying to get it in. Then you got to listen to the thing. Then you got to smell the thing. Then you got to run it, even if you just want to run your phone mm -hmm. or something small. And then you got to deal with maintenance on it, which is no, they're, they're, they have a lot of maintenance and they just don't, they don't compute, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, at all. But uh, not for a primary source. Sometimes you need them as a secondary, but if you do, you do. You just find you, what it ends up is you just don't use it that much. Yeah. They do. They, they do good as a secondary backup, and sometimes you need them, but you don't. Um, but a solar will get you most of the way there most of the times. Sometimes you need a generator, and that's just how it goes. But even then, you can buy a. 1,000 watt generator or 2,000 watt generator instead of a 5,000 watt mm -hmm. generator. And the problem, of course, like I was saying, is if you're running a 5,000 watt generator all, and you have a fridge, for instance, you pretty much got to run the thing all the time. Mm -hmm. It'll suck down tons of power. In the worst case scenario, you've got a 5,000 watt inverter, I'm sorry, a 5,000 watt generator, and all you need to do is plug in your phone. Right. Right? Then you've got this big loud thing sucking down gas and you're just, it's hardly using any of its capability. So, so you know, you just end up getting a much smaller generator, uh, using much less fuel, and then doing almost all of it solar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and if you're only charging your phone and your generator's on, you can also plug it into your battery system and to charge, charge your battery at the same time. Which is how it's set up. Yeah. That's how it's set up. Yeah. Right. So you just generate a lot for a small amount of time, charge your batteries, and then run off the battery system. And hopefully you're good until the sun comes back out. Yeah, or, 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 or you do it as, as needed. And you can also set them up with an automatic generator start um, mm -hmm. that will just start the generator when the batteries get low, a little low. And then, then you're into a basically a system that doesn't require any kind of input. And, and that's, what, that's, you know, that's the setup for, uh, for what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, places where you're not going to get a lot of sun mm -hmm. certain times of the year. Mm -hmm. so. um, okay. I'm not an engineer. I haven't looked into the answer to this question, but I, I expect that like the other holy grail for me, the, uh, in the van that I haven't figured out yet enough, uh, because I don't even with 800 watts, I don't feel like I have enough generating capacity to run an AC as often as the expense would be worth to me. Sure. Um, and I think that we're limited there by condenser technology, which may not be able to move anymore. So my question for you is sort of an analog to that. How far are we from a 500-watt panel that's this big? No, way it's far. Not, it's not possible. Super far. But we're super far away. Probably, Probably not possible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there might be some kind of revolutionary thing, but it would have to be absolutely revolutionary. Yeah. Because even the best things right now are like... Um, you know, 400 watts for, I think it's uh, 65 inches by 44 inches or something mm -hmm. like that. And it's, it, get, it, it incrementally, it gets better about 5% a year, Okay. give or take. And I don't know if there's, I don't know what the ceiling is. Some mm -hmm. people say the ceiling was, you know, we'll never get to where we are now. Mm -hmm. Other people say the ceiling, we still got a little ways to go. But um, it's going to be a minute. But, uh, or maybe never on that, on that front. On that with, sort of with scale, that, piece on of that, paper yeah, size. Uh -huh, that's right. But we're well into um, into usable functional power, mm -hmm. right? The, and they're getting better and better and better. The, it, it, it's in the eight years I've done it, it's not quite doubled in mm -hmm. the efficiency. It's gotten yeah, it's it's got it's like seventy percent. Pretty freaking impressive. Yeah, yeah in eight years. Yeah, I, I started out with so two hundred and no one hundred eighty watts. Um, and a little bit smaller panel than is, than is now more like 300 and you know 350 or something like that. Cool. Yeah. So they're getting they're getting better and better and better. But they're, like I said, they're um, they're well into the threshold of being fun, super functional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about pre light harvest miles. What did you do before you started light harvest? Um, I did a um, aerospace. Uh, I did prototype aerospace stuff. I was we're, I, we built the first. SpaceX rockets and uh, built a bunch of prototype type aeros, airplanes. Crazy. Built, prototype air, had a prototype carbon fiber airplanes. So you've sort of been in like this inventing mindset for a long time. Yeah, I mean, my the first career I wanted was to design an airplane. I designed an airplane. I got about halfway through building it and realized that it's just a project that was beyond the scope of my finances. Uh huh. Basically, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, and then I started the you know started this. So that was my that was what I did aerospace stuff. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, is there is there a project after 
after this that you're fantasizing about? Or? Well, yeah, I mean, I have tons and tons of them. Uh, mostly what I think is the, the really neat, well, the goal for this, there's a couple goals for this company. One of them is to build a house that does everything for you. It generates all your power, your heat, your, grows your food and has it fairly automated. Um, and de deals with uh, yeah deals with plumbing and everything like that so that everything a house that will do everything with the idea that in when I'm dead and gone they're going to be people are going to be in a situation where they have to quit shipping growing the food halfway across the world and shipping it all over and polluting all the things right uh, everything has to be localized because there's just too much movement of stuff you have to build the roads to build the ships to mm -hmm. build the fuel to get the fuel to move it all around. And it just, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen when there's, you know, 20 billion people or whatever it's gonna be. So there's gonna, so part of the goal is to, to, to build a house that would do, kind of what you're doing yeah. in your van. Yeah. That would do everything for you, including grow all your own food. Right. So, um, Why don't you have any ambition? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then the main, the main thing I think is important is to, you know, partly selfish too, is I want to promote solar through fun. Right, so yeah. I want, so the electric cars are coming on. So I have got, you know, I want to do stuff like have a trailer that is packed with solar that will charge your truck, that will have all that your cooking and all your stuff and everything you need. Mm -hmm. You know, have your electric bikes and your or your electric quads or your electric whatever is going to come out that isn't even here yet, mm -hmm. right? And and um, and then and then do you know sort of the. Red Bull style, you know, the semi truck pulls up and the solar panels pop out. Yeah. And the bros pull out their electric bikes and the DJ starts up and the girls start up and mm -hmm. the music and everybody has their fun and everything like that. And that's how I want to promote it. I just feel like the change is going to come through fun. Quick, that's the quickest yeah, way, sure. to, way to get it going. And, and so we're right on the precipice of having the all the electric vehicles. They're cheaper. They're going to be cheaper, higher performing, with less maintenance. And as soon as that happens in America, the, the old stuff dies and the new stuff comes, and, and we're there. Yeah. So, um, so that's as a business that and, and promotional. That's where I want to start to go. And then, of course, like I said, having that finance some of the other stuff with the with the housing and the trying to get get uh, get this uh, constant consumption of the system that we have now under control and um, and make it so people are let, you know, don't have to drive all over the place don't have to ship everything all over the place maybe maybe make more of a minimalist lifestyle attractive mm -hmm. you know and um, you know maybe they can live further out. And, and, and so that, those are some of the long-term goals that we have. And we're, you know, for, for the first time, looking at maybe being able to pull some of this stuff off. So yeah. to start to move into out of idea phase and into into prototype phase. And um, yeah, we got a big new shop now. We got a lot of people around us, a really good community. Mm -hmm. And I'm feeling like for the first time, we may have a have a shot of making a go at it. Very cool. Yeah. Um, that sounded like a perfect ending. <laughs> All right. You, is there anything pressing in your mind that oh, we need to talk great. about? That we haven't talked about. Cool. We did. We covered a lot. That's yeah. Really good. Thank you yeah. for doing this. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. you. I always like to talk about it, and I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, man. Me too. All right. All right, buddy. All right, guys. We did it. That was episode seventy-four. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you've been here this long. Uh, Miles and I had a wonderful conversation on the podcast, and uh, this happens delightfully often. We turned the recording equipment off, and the two of us got on Amazon and I believe Zillow and started looking for uh, land and like atmospheric water generators, which we didn't get into the episode. Uh, Google that, it's super interesting. Um, and then the incinerating toilets and sort of trying to part out what it would take to really have a, a spot that didn't require any plumbing and sewer or electrical. Uh, and so the two of us nerded out for a couple of hours. It was wonderful to talk to him uh, both on and off of the podcast. I hope that you enjoyed it and uh, come back next week. We'll have another episode for you.